Yo, welcome back to Alpha Omega University. Welcome back, everyone. We are back with another one. I know we've had a couple canceled episodes recently. And tomorrow, uh, we won't have an episode, all right? I told you guys this month is going to be heavy for me. It's going to be hectic, you know? But, 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 um, we're finally getting into some fun episodes, man. Um, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. All the other episodes uh, that we were doing, like, the last two weeks or so, uh, actually, it was a little more. I think it was, like, three weeks. Like, uh, all the episodes for the last, like, three weeks have been, uh, they've been very important episodes, all right? We were doing a series talking about individual roles, right? And uh, it's very important, right? Like, like you can't you can't move past, uh, you know, when you're trying to teach the game and trying to teach concepts and trying to teach like strategies and things like that. You, you, you just can't move past the fact that sometimes you're just gonna have to go over like, uh, you know, a bunch of things that are, um, how, how do I say this? Uh, I, I don't wanna say boring, but just like absolutely necessary that you just gotta fucking hit it. You know, like, like you, 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 you gotta learn certain things before you can get into the good stuff, right? But uh, today, today we actually are, uh, we're, we're already done with that series, right? We're already done with talking about the individual roles and all that. And and listen, all those all those episodes are very important. So if you didn't watch them, if you skip them or whatever, uh, listen, the truth is, is that at, at the minimum, you have to watch the episode for your particular role, right? You, you just have to. Like, it's, it's so important that you understand uh, all the mechanics of that role that you're playing, all right? And this is also for veterans too. Like, don't, you know, we're going to have an episode soon, uh, coming soon. That's It's called Ego Check, right? And and it, it's kind of like you guys got to watch your ego, right? Just because you've played the game for a while does not mean that you know everything about the game. All right. So like um, also things change all the time. And sometimes you just miss a little patch here or there that, you know, it just you just weren't playing for that week or whatever. And a patch came out and you wouldn't pay attention and you didn't realize, uh, you know, something got nerfed, something got changed, something got buffed, whatever. Right. So. Um, you got to stay on top of things, man. And, and and it's tough. I know it's tough. And sometimes it might seem mundane, right? It might seem like uh, we're just kind of going over like uh, shit that like we've already gone over many times before. But it's very important that we stay up to date, right? We can't lose basics. However, today, today we got a good episode, man. Today we got a really good episode. Um, this episode is particularly fun for me because this is the number one thing that I love uh, about this game when it comes to strategy. And a lot of people don't understand it uh, fully, right? And they, they don't really grasp how this affects everything else in a, in a, in a ZVZ, all right? So today we got episode 21, uh, Under Pressure, all right? So today is all about pressure, okay? And it's about how to apply pressure on an enemy and what kind of pressures there exist. Now... There, there will be a follow-up episode to this episode, but this is going to be like in two months or so, okay? Um, that follow-up episode is going to go deeper into the tactics behind uh, applying the pressure, all right? So today, we're just going to kind of lay out what the pressure things are in the game, what, what, what those, those things that you can exert on the enemy that'll make them make mistakes, right? That's really what pressure is, is, is for, is to make them make mistakes, right? So um, we're just going to kind of go over all the individual different types of pressures that you can apply on the enemy and a little bit on how you can apply them, th those pressures, right? Um, the thing is, is we can't go super deep into detail um, because there's a lot of other things I have to kind of, uh, you know, go through with you guys, right? So uh, the, you guys have seen the schedule a few times now, and you know, there's a lot of little things there, especially that series that's like right in the middle of the schedule. Um, the, the, the whole series of uh, uh, the, the calling styles, right? The calling strategies. Uh, you know, you got Crescent Pressure, you got Sword Engage, you got, you know, all those different styles are going to be very, very important so that next time we do another pressure episode i can actually explain to you guys how we can use those individual tactics to be able to apply pressure right so everything that i'm telling you guys today is very 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 important but you got to understand like this is like the 101 on on pressure right and if and if you don't understand by like the 101 uh because i know uh different countries have different systems right but in in the united states 
here in in like the university systems here in the in the United States, uh, a one zero one so one o one class is like the like the fun foundational right. It's like the 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 first class that you take of that series, and then you go up to like two o one or two o two, you know, depending on whatever series they have, right? So what I'm saying by like this this episode today is the one o one on pressure. It's like it's the foundation, right? And and we're gonna be talking about all the different kinds of pressure that there that there is in this game. Um, that that can force the enemy to make mistakes. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys right off the bat, man. Pressure is the number one factor when it comes to the highest level of play. When you have equal, equally good callers, and you have equally good players on either side of like each zerg, right? So the zergs are equally strong, and the callers are equally strong. All right, and they're both wearing like equal IP, right? Like kind of kind of remove all those inequality factors right make it as even as possible in an, in a very high level even fight pressure is the difference between who will win and who will lose all right now it doesn't mean that this only applies to the top top most most uh fights the difference is that that's when you see it the most okay because that's when you really feel it however in, in every single stage of fighting, and it doesn't matter if it's 20v20, e I, truthfully, even 5v5, right? Pressure is so, uh, it's such a huge part of everything because it's it, it, it doesn't have to do with what you're actually doing in the game, but rather what the person is experiencing in their own mind, right? It's the psychology of what's happening to the person that is playing the game. All right, and that's what pressure is. And if you understand that, and you understand how to apply pressure onto the enemy, then you are 10 times better than them already. And you can make them make the mistakes that they don't even know they're going to make simply because you're you're controlling their pressure, right? You're controlling uh, how how they're gonna be thinking about things. So it's, 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 it's a very, very important episode. Um, absolutely. Uh, as always, uh, hit the follow button if you guys want to. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. The content is free, but I do, I do, I do appreciate the subscriptions on YouTube. Uh, subscription is free, so go ahead and subscribe. Uh, hit a like on the on the on the video if you like the the content. Share the video uh, because that helps me spread out, right? And, and make sure the community gets bigger and bigger. I know that uh, there there are some guilds, uh, some some uh, guild leaders that have kind of come to me and 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 ask me about like you know if 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 I'm okay with them kind of like incorporating these videos to like their guild and you know using it to teach their members and stuff and like listen I'm telling you guys this is why I do this right I want you guys to 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 use it so that you guys can teach your members I want you guys to spread it as much as possible so that we can all get better at the game and and not just a handful of people right for a very long time um, for a very long time, we uh, we had this mentality in the Albion community as players, right? We had this mentality that, well, we shouldn't necessarily uh, show our hand, right? We shouldn't necessarily show the the other people in the game our strategies, right? This is why many callers back in the day used to um, not not want their calls uh recorded or uploaded onto youtube right things like that because they didn't want to give the enemy insight on how to get better or or or, or how to counter right um one, one of the biggest ones that this this was king mojo right king mojo didn't really want people to have his comms out on videos and stuff like that and and it's because that that's a big piece of it right but now we're at a point where pretty much everybody's learning zvz at a, at a fair level now, right? And so, hiding certain things doesn't matter. Th doesn't make as much sense anymore because the examples are out there already. And so that's why I'm putting it out because I want to make sure that you guys get as much information as possible. So definitely, definitely spread it as much as you want. Let everybody know that that's completely the reason that I'm doing this. This is not like for select few people. This is for everybody. So, yo, Jotita, what's up, man? I appreciate you being here, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, all right. So listen, um, I have a few videos uh, that that we're going to go over, but I'm not 100% sure we'll have a lot of time to do it. All right. Because there's a lot to cover. 
And and I'm not 100% sure that we'll have uh, enough time to to go through all of them. We have four videos. Um, one of them is Escalation versus Mitos. Another one is uh, Take Care versus Escalation. Another one is Blue Army versus Raid. And another one is Elevate versus PoE, right? So those are the four videos. And all four videos have components of pressure that I want to show you guys. So we'll see uh, which ones we get into and how much we can get into them depending on, on, on when we finish. Uh, but I, either way, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of things that I'm going to show. Um, and there is a small chance that we may not even get to any of the videos. If we don't get into any of the videos, um, I will try to, I will most likely do a VOD review video with at least one or two of these videos. Um, that, that way you guys can still get some like insight on those videos because they are good videos. Right. Uh, but in general, I don't know if we're going to get to it. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, drop it in the chat. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, drop it in the chat. I am watching, I am reading, and I will respond. Um, but yeah, we got we got a lot to 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 go today. I'm just gonna ask you guys keep an open mind. All right, don't close up and think that that you know. Well, you haven't heard of these things before, so it doesn't matter as much. Or don't think, well, yeah, we know about that, and it's not that big a deal. Don't think that because I, I, I'm telling you 100% from my experience, this is extremely, extremely important. Okay, so um, I'm going to I'm going to put it real simple, real quick. I'm going to tell you guys the four types of pressure that there is in, in this game. All right. Um, actually, there's five. Sorry, there, there, there's a fifth one. I miscounted. There's five. There are five types of pressure. All right. That there is in this game. The first one is positional pressure. The second one is damage pressure. The third one is angular, angle, like angle, angular pressure. Fourth one is disruption pressure. And the fifth one is timing pressure. All right. So those are the five keys for the, for the, for the, uh, for the different types of pressure in this game. All right. So let me get some water real quick. Um, and then we'll get started with positional pressure. All right. You gotta stay hydrated, man. You gotta stay hydrated. The the sun's coming out, man. We 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 got summer around the corner. All right. So, uh, positional pressure is the first one. All right. Positional pressure is very 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 simple. All right. And I want to actually try to show you guys positional pressure. Let me see this video. I'm gonna pause it over here. There we go. And then I haven't done this, but I think it might work. I think it's gonna work. Yeah, I think it's going to work. All right. Let me get set up here real quick. All right. So uh, I'm going to have to be jumping back and forth between screens just so you guys know. All right. But but you know what? We'll make it. We'll make it. We'll make it happen. All right. So uh, let me hop back real quick. There it is. All right. So the positional pressure. Um, I'm going to explain it real quick and then I'm going to draw it in the diagram. All right. And then I'm going to show you guys when I draw it and all that. That way you guys can, can kind of keep up. All right. So positional pressure is basically when you're walking up to the enemy and simply you're cutting distance with them. All right. You're, you're not doing anything fancy. You're not doing anything at all. Honestly, you're just walking towards them. Okay. Um, how do you exert positional pressure? Well, by simply walking into them, but also by walking past their tanks, okay? You basically say to the enemy, fuck your front line, right? Because they have a front line, they have tanks, they have whatever, right? You're not supposed to just walk past them. And then you just do, you just don't give a damn, right? You just you just say, well, I don't give a damn. I'm just gonna walk in. What the hell are you gonna do about it, right? And when you do that, the enemy's gonna naturally kind of get scared because they're like, damn, why are you so ballsy? Why are you acting like you're you're invincible, right? And And, Listen, the better trained Zergs don't respond as much to this, but every Zerg, no matter how, how strong the Zerg is, I promise you every Zerg responds to this to a certain, uh, to a certain level. All right. So all you got to do is, is walk into them past their, their tanks. And then their, 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 their back line is going to see you do this and they're going to realize, oh shit. I'm not safe. You just walk past my tanks and it's going to get into their psychology, into their brain, into their mind to think, okay, maybe I'm not so safe right now. Right? So what they're going to start to do, they're going to start backing up. 
they're going to start getting in position. They might start like, you know, just getting, getting uh, ready and they might stare at you because they might think, oh, he's going to, he's going to do something crazy. I don't know. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to kill me or something. Right. And so it makes them focus on you. Right. And, and I want you to think about that. Right. Because they're focusing on you. That means they're no longer focusing on everybody else. They're no longer focusing on, on, on their job. They're only focusing on you. And even if it's for one second, half a second, a fourth of a second, it doesn't matter. That is an opening window. Now, imagine if your entire Zerg does this, okay? Then who are they going to be able to look at? They're going to look at this one guy who's close to them, then the other guy that's close to them, and the other guy that's close to them, and they're not going to be able to respond appropriately. That one-fourth of a second extra that they take because they're worried about you simply walking towards them is going to cause them to make mistakes, such as being late to hitting the clump when their caller calls the, the engage, or, or walking backwards too far, and now they're too far away from the front line to do anything about it right? These kinds of things are all exerted by positional pressure. Okay. It's very, very important that you guys understand it. I'm going to show you guys in a diagram in a second here. So essentially what I'm saying to you is to exert this, uh, to exert this, this, um, this strategy, this positional pressure on the enemy, all you got to do is have like this, this alpha mentality, right? You're just going to walk up to the enemy. Even if they're engaging on you, just walk up walk up if you know that you're gonna survive like let's say you pop the gig pot right and they bomb you and now their damage is over and you still got like 50 or 60 percent hp walk into them don't give a fuck even if your caller is not telling you like like we're gonna counter it it's okay just walk into them and the reason is is because if you start walking into them when you're literally half hp and they just wasted all their cooldowns on you you know what they're gonna think they're gonna be like holy fuck we can't kill this guy this guy's invincible right? This guy's fucking badass. Holy shit, right? So it's going to make them think, right? And that's all you need. It doesn't mean, I'm not saying go all the way to the back line and start doing all kinds of shit. No, 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 no. It's just positional pressure. It's just reminding them, hey, you just hit me and I'm still standing here in front of you. What the fuck are you going to do when I actually come at you, right? And you, you might think, oh no, well, that's, that's overthinking it. I promise you that's exactly the way it works. And if you look at sports in general, all, all sports, right? You look at sports. Think about, uh, I, I know, I know uh, uh, in Europe, they call it football, right? But in, in the US, we call it, we call it soccer, right? So, so if you think about soccer, right? There are many, many players that play very aggressively at the start of the game. And the reason they play aggressive and they go and they bump into each other and knock each other down and push each other around. Why? Because they want to show the other players, hey, listen. You, 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 you can't bully me around. You can't push me around. I'm coming at you, right? And so when they go and make a play later on in the game, that fucking guy's going to remember the last time he tried to stand in front of him. He got knocked the fuck down on his ass, right? He don't want to do that again. So you know what he's going to do? He's going to take a step back. And that extra little step back, that little hesitation, that's going to be the difference between the, the soccer player going, shooting, and scoring a goal versus, you know, getting the ball taken away from him. Right, so it's the response. I, I I want you guys to think if if you guys uh you know some of the OG players are um in in in, in listening right now, if you guys remember, uh, Blue Army when Blue Army was around, how many times did people look at simply the Blue Army tag? Right, they just see Blue Army like as a guild name. Like they just see a guy show up and it says the the guild name Blue Army, and they're like, oh my god. I'm going to run away. And it's like, dude, it's like, it's like 20 guys from blue army. It's like not even their Zerg. It's just 20 dudes. And you got like 30 or 40 dudes and they still run away. They don't care. Right. And it's like a hundred percent, a hundred percent blue army would have lost that fight. But, but simply because the enemy second guess, they hesitated. Why? Because, because they simply see that name and they, and they think, oh shit, I'm scared. Right. It works the same exact way in every individual ZVZ. Okay, so when, when you're in an individual ZVZ and then they bomb the shit out of you with everything they have and you're still standing there like, what are you going to do about it, right? It makes them think, oh shit, I can't kill this guy. No matter what I do, I can't kill this guy, right? So you have to have that alpha mentality, right? And then you got to flex on them a little bit. Show them, show them, you know, what are you going to do about it, right? I'm walking up on you. What are you going to do about it, right? So I'm going to show you guys right now in the diagram real quick. Um, Hold up. Uh, there we go. Oh, no, I fucked it up. That's that's my notes. See, that's my notes. I told you guys, I, I, I write it up. All right, so listen. So, um, let's put it this way. This here on the west side is your front line, 
Okay, this here is the enemy front line. All right, on the on the on, on the on the east side. All right, so we have uh, on the east side we have the 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 enemies here. Let's put an E for for enemy, right? And F for friendly. All right. So uh, here's here here's here's your front line. Here's their front line, and uh, you're standing here. All right, you're you're this guy. You're right in front. You know, you're like kind kind of like a. Uh, a, a very very frontline tank right you're, you're 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 all the way to the front right that's fine so all you got to do is literally start walking into the enemy okay so you start walking into the enemy and you know what i'm gonna make these better i'm gonna make these better let's say the enemy's got you know that 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 that's how the, the enemy's around right that that that's the fucking enemy zerg and this is your zerg all right all right there we go all right so then you're this guy here and you start walking into them Okay, and then you walk in to like this location here, right? Now, all these guys here are gonna see you, right? They're gonna see you and they're gonna be like, yo, why is he, why is he walking into us? Like, why are my tanks, why are my tanks not doing anything about this? Like, they're gonna look at these tanks here and say, damn, he's just walking past them. He don't give a damn, right? So you know what the rest of the guys are gonna do? All of these guys here, they're gonna decide, okay, they're going to choose. I'm going to back up, right? Because I want to get away from them, right? I, I want to get away from that one guy because he seems scary. Or, you know, what they what they might do is they might just like this one guy, he might just walk a little bit northeast, right? Now, suddenly, instead of him being there, he's going to be up here, right? He's going to be up here, all right? And now, look, you just created a little gap. All, all because you did a, a positional pressure. That's literally all you did. Like you literally, I'm not even telling you drop a Q, W, auto attack, nothing. You just walked forward, okay? All you did is walk forward. And on top of walking forward, you created this gap, right? That we just looked at, right? We just, you created this gap, but also what did you do? Now you made these guys clump a little, didn't you? Right? So those guys are now clumping. That's a terrible dot. I'm gonna put it again. All right, so now those guys are clumping right here, right? Now, let's say this guy over here walks in and stands over here right on the south side okay well this guy is gonna be like okay i'm gonna back up so he's gonna come up here this way right so then what he's gonna do i'm gonna raise his dot he's gonna go and stand somewhere over here right this guy is like i don't want to be next to that guy because this guy's a clothy right this guy was the tank up here this guy was the tank and he decided to back up so then what this guy's gonna do, he's like, well, I'm a cloth thief. The tank didn't stay there. I, shit, I'm not gonna stay there, right? I'm not an idiot. So he's gonna back up. And you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna go up here. And now suddenly you see what you see what's happening, right? Because of this one positional pressure and this other positional pressure, two people put in pressure. Now this guy can also move over here now and keep doing the same thing, right? Now all of these guys are like, oh, well, I don't wanna be in the front. So they're gonna back up even more, right? So. Anyway, you, you understand what I'm saying. But my point is that now, because of simple positioning pressure, and again, there's no Qs, Ws, nothing involved here. It's just position, right? You just walked towards them and they didn't do anything about it. So they just backed up, okay? So now here's what's gonna happen. Now there's a clump here. So if your Zerg decides to engage, that's an easier clump for your Zerg to engage, okay? Now, if your Zerg doesn't engage, well, that's fine. Here's the here's the problem that the enemy faces. This is the enemy right here, right? So this is the problem that the enemy faces. If they decide to engage on you here and they decide to engage on this other guy here, okay, great. That's fine. They can kill those those two guys. They can kill you and the other guy. I mean, possibly you're going to be you're going to use your gig or whatever, right? And by the way, this is not just for tanks, by the way. This is not just for tanks. This is for everybody. Uh, not really for healers, um, but everybody else, yeah. I mean, everybody else can do it, okay? Because if a DPS were to do this, okay, the only difference is like, let's say this guy's a DPS up here. Instead of walking into the enemy like this, all you have to do as a DPS instead is just walk at their flank and stand on their flank, right? So instead of doing going in, you're going to go into their flank and you'll stand at their flank there. So that way now you're going to be using your Qs and Ws on them from a different position or at the minimum again positional right all you got to do is show your presence here okay so that way the enemy's like oh shit we got enemies to the north this guy's gonna be like okay well i'm gonna back up south right when that guy does that 
when this guy moves to the south, now you have another dot to the south, okay? So what's gonna happen is you see how they get clumped more and more and more. And this is all literally just positional pressure. Now, when you add Qs and Ws and all that, then it's a, it's a significantly more powerful pressure, right? But we're gonna talk to, about that in a minute. What I'm talking about here is essentially just the positional aspect of this, okay? It's just by positioning. And if you don't believe me, um, I will show you guys in other videos, if we get to the videos at the end, I will show you guys how position just affects people's nature to walk around places and locations simply because people have this idea in their head in Albion that they have to stay six feet away from everybody. It's like, it's like they think that everybody in Albion has COVID or something like it, 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 I don't understand it. Right. So what I'm saying is that everybody's going to do this naturally. The best players will not do this that much, all right? The best players will, will keep a lid on it, I, I, I guess you can say, keep a lid on it of sorts, right? However, the, the lesser experienced players will definitely do this right off the bat, right off the bat. You won't even have, like, you won't even, like, if you're this guy, by the time you stand here, these guys are already backing up, all right? Like, that's the truth. Okay, because that's the inexperienced player. The more experienced players, you're gonna have to actually walk past the front line a little bit in order to accomplish this, what I'm telling you, okay? But it's all positional pressure. The problem is, is that yes, they can turn, the entire Zerg can turn and hit you. But if they do that, now your entire Zerg has a free shot at them, okay? And they can flank you because they engage directly north and you can engage from the west. And so it's gonna be on their side, on their flank, and it's gonna it's gonna be able to be uh, more powerful, right? Um, with positional pressure, it's very, very important that, that you guys understand how to apply it, but at the same time, don't overextend in doing it, okay? You just want to show your presence. That's all you want to do, okay? Walk into them a little bit. You know, poke around, see see what they allow you to do, right? If, if here, here's, the, here's the problem with this, okay? If they decide, let me, let me run it back a bit here. Uh, I'll run it back quite a bit. I'm going to just erase the shit. All right. So if they, if you go in right there and then all these guys decide to start dropping Q's and W's at you, right? And they start hitting you. That means that they are actually wanting to hold this position. All right. They're wanting to hold this line no matter what, right? That in and of itself is actually good information for you. OK, don't think of this like a like a oh, well, that means I can't exert positional pressure on them. No, 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 no. At the minimum, you prove that they want to anchor this position. They want to hold it, which means that if they want to hold this position, then you can play a certain different way. You don't have to walk completely into them. Right. You can instead just poke them because you know that if they're playing defensive, they are not gonna go and engage on you, right? They are not gonna engage on you across. This is what I mean, I'll show you guys in a second. So let's say this is a choke, right? And and, and you try to poke them and you, you walk up here and they, they all engage you and so then you walk back, right? What you just learned is that they're actually trying to hold this choke and that's good information. Why? Because it tells you, okay, you don't have to play so far forward. Instead, you can try to use your bombers to bomb over wall at those guys in front of you because they are not actually going to try to push through, okay? Because one of the critical things about, about choke fights is that this group goes and engages east, okay? And then this group is going to stop them here on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the choke, right? They stop them on the choke. And so now this entire group is on the choke and they got stopped. So this entire group then counter engages and kills everybody, right? However, what you can do is if you know they're not gonna dislodge by natural positioning, okay, by simply positional pressure, well, you, you learn from that and you can say, okay, well, instead I'm gonna go and send one party to engage because they are not gonna engage on one party because they know that I have more guys ready to bomb. Right. So then what you can do is literally cycle back and forth nonstop. OK, I send my my first party in. OK, I killed one guy. All right. There. Boom. And I walk back and then I wait till their cooldowns up and then I send the same party in. Now they kill this guy. Right. And I wait till they come back. And now I send the party in again and I kill this guy. Right. 
as long as they are not returning fire, right? As long as they're not returning fire and hitting you back, then you, you know for a fact that you can continue doing this all the time, right? Now, if you exert positional pressure on the enemy, you stand here, right? And they naturally start walking northeast from here because you, you walked into their lines. Then what's gonna happen is that they're gonna realize, okay, this guy walked into us, I'm backing up. So now that tells you something. It tells you, well, they're not ready to hold this choke. They're, they're actually thinking I'm gonna back up instead of I'm gonna counter engage, right? This is very, very important for holding chokes and breaking chokes, all right? So um, let me go back and then uh, I'm gonna let you guys keep watching this video here. I don't know where we were. I should have tabbed it, but I'm gonna put it back at seven minutes. I think we were more, I think we were like nine minutes. Um, I'm gonna keep playing from there. Uh, hold on, hold on. All right, so that's positional pressure, right? Um, I partly included a lot of the little things about pressure from the other ones, okay? And that's because um, they're all kind of meshed together, okay? They all work together in some shape or form, okay? They don't all, um, they're not they're not all individual is what I should say. You're, you're gonna apply pressure in different ways, all right? Now, the next one up is damage pressure, all right? So damage pressure is essentially what everybody understands as pressure, okay? This is the classic pressure that everybody understands. It's like, okay, yeah, 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 this is pressure. Like, we get it, okay? It's like it's like a caller goes and says, put pressure on the enemy, right? Well, what are you gonna do? That means that you're gonna walk up to them and start using Qs and Ws and auto attacks, right? Like, everybody understands that. And so, for those people that don't understand, damage pressure is simply, is simply just, you know, apply pressure on the enemy in terms of putting damage on the enemy so that they back up or so that you can dislodge them from, from a position. Um, damage pressure is anything to like make their healers kind of uh, come forward and heal their front line. So that way you can catch the healers in a bad position. Okay, things like that. So that's what damage pressure is for, but e essentially exerting damage pressure is just putting damage on the enemy. Okay, however, um, there are many other ways that damage applies as pressure. All right, now damage applies as pressure in more than just auto attacks, Qs, and Ws. When you engage with your E, that is technically damage pressure, right? Because if you're gonna go and hit the enemy and then they see a bunch of people die in a clump, the rest of the Zerg is going to get scared, right? They're gonna be like, oh shit. I, or like, uh, I'm trying to push through a choke and then all the guys that try to push through that choke died. I'm not gonna push through that choke, right? That's the psychology that they have. So, so what I'm saying is that you know, when, when when bodies hit the floor, when people die, then people start to, to get in their heads this psychology of like, oh, well, I'm not gonna make that mistake, right? I, I'm not gonna walk on that choke. I'm not gonna try to push through that choke. Even though my caller's telling me to do it, I'm not gonna push through that choke. And the reason I'm not gonna push through that choke is, is simply because, well, I don't wanna die, right? And we understand that, we, we know that this is like, like, it's like, uh, come on, come on, Calron. Like, why are you telling me all this shit? Like, we already know this. Well, here's the thing. You agree with it when it comes to, you know, damage pressure. But when I tell you guys about positional pressure, a lot of times people are like, oh, no, I don't think that's, I, no, I don't think it's that big a deal. It is. It's as big a deal as when people take damage. You understand? So when people die at a choke, people get scared, right? If, if, you're, if, if an enemy walks up to your Zerg, your Zerg is going to start to play a little more defensive. Those are kinds of things that are very, very important. So um, another thing with damage pressure is when you deny access from the enemy. Okay, so what I mean by that is, let's say the enemy tries to exert positional pressure on you, right? They try to walk up to you or walk, you know, through your front line and towards your back line, okay? Let's say the enemy starts to do that. Well, if they try to walk up on you and you instantly use a shitload of Q's, W's, auto attacks on that guy until he backs the fuck up, well, then the pressure is now exerted on him. See, he was trying to exert positional pressure on you, but then instead of you taking that positional pressure, instead of that, you instead apply damage pressure onto him. And now he he's going to think twice before he's going to attempt to do that uh, positional pressure on you, right? So, so he's not going to want to try to walk into you anymore because he's going to respect your front line now 
because it's going to be like, yeah, the moment I walk to that front line, I get fucking bombed by everything. Okay. So they're not going to want to keep doing that. Okay. So that, that's the point of damage pressure. Now, another thing about damage pressure is, is like how I mentioned earlier, let's say you're a DPS, you try to go to the flanks. Okay, you go to the flanks and then you use your Q, your W, your auto attacks on the enemies as much as you can while you're in the flanks. Okay, now I'm not talking about going around all the way to their back or whatever. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the just the absolute flank, literally just like the edge of the Zerg. Just put a little bit, just literally just some Qs, W, some auto attacks. That's it. Like, just be annoying. Just, just kind of hit them a little bit enough that they can feel that you're there. Okay, and when you do that, not only are they feeling the positional pressure, but they're also feeling the damage pressure. And that's going to e force them even more to try to walk away from you naturally. All right. Um, now, at the same time, right, you have to be very careful with exerting uh, pressure on the enemy. OK, with damage pressure uh, off cooldown and and because and positional pressure. OK, you can't just walk into the enemy all the time. I mean, if your Zerg is not healthy and ready to counter engage the enemy, then why the hell are you going to walk up to the enemy if they if they full engage on you your zerg's not ready to counter engage anyway right so why are you trying to exert positional pressure at that point okay now um when 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 you're inside the enemy like if you do actually walk inside the enemy with damage pressure okay so when you when you actually get to walk into the enemy i want you guys to be active right don't just walk in there and then be like yeah i'm just going to auto attack you and w whoever okay don't do that make it even better all right how do you make it better well try to find their healers okay try to find their healers and try to use q's w's auto attacks on them right the reason for it is because then you're gonna make them have to be looking for their own safety as opposed to paying attention to the safety of the zerg right so then if you're applying uh, uh damage pressure on the enemy's healers, you're actually going to delay their response to your actual engage, right? Um, so that's the point of damage pressure is that slowly over time, you're kind of chipping at their psychology. You're chipping at their ability to make rational and quick decisions against the things that you're doing simply by delaying them even just slightly, right? It, 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 works, it works very, very strongly, all right? Now, the next one we're going to talk about is uh, is angular pressure, all right? Now, angular pressure is, is angles, right? So you're actually applying pressure on the enemy with the different angles that you are around them, all right? And I'll show you guys in the diagram in a, in a minute, all right? But basically, you want to try to envelop the enemy from all sides, right? And circle them individually you want to cut off angles and that's going to be very 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 important and i'll get to it in a minute so essentially you want to make it as though there's nowhere to hide right they literally look at, 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 at completely they look north they look east they look south they look west and they see your name tags all around them right that is angular pressure because even though you're not engaging them i mean I'm not telling you to engage them. I mean, that, that's on the collar. That's, you know, that's completely on the collar. But what I'm saying is that the fact that they see name tags in every direction, it makes them not understand where exactly you are, right? Like, where is their entire Zerg? I see name tags all around me. So when the caller makes a mistake and says, all right, get ready to engage in three, two, one, hit them now, hit them now, hit them now. Okay, that sounds like a valid engage. But the, but the caller never said west, north, south, or east. And yet you see name tags west, north, south, and east of you. And so what direction do you choose to engage? Well, here's the thing. I bet you if they have name tags all around them, at least one, if not two, maybe even three DPS are going to make the mistake of engaging south when the, when the actual caller is trying to call to engage west, right? So simply because of angular pressure, that's all it is, is you're applying pressure to their mentality about where to engage, where to put pressure at, where to actually hit and how to follow calls. It just makes it harder for them to understand that, right? So you want to try to blindside the enemy, right? So usually there's another type of angular pressure, right? Usually you want to try to blindside the enemy with bomb squads, right? Um, or if you're a solo clapper, clapper that, that also works, right? Solo clappers and bomb squads, they tend to do really, really, really well with angular pressure, all right? 
And the, the reason is, is because they tend to hit at different angles that usually you don't see it coming. All right. And that's going to go into something else that I'll talk about later when it comes to timing pressure. But when it comes to angles, here's the thing. The enemy is dealing with your Zerg on the west. And then suddenly they have to be worried about a bomb squad to the north. Right. That's splitting their ability to to deal with both sides. This is why right now the state of the game is so, so deep on multiple fronts. This is also why right now uh, disengaged tanks are so important. And it's because there's so many flanks on the field every single big fight nowadays. Right. There's there's more uh, flanks now nowadays than, than there was years ago. I mean, years ago, there was probably more players fighting each other, but there wasn't as many as many fucking broken up Zergs and broken up flanks. Nowadays, it's like you have a 20 man to your east. You have a, a, a 60 man to your north, a 50 man to your west and, and to your south. You have a, a fucking bomb squad like and it's like, damn, like, where the hell do I engage? Where the hell do I look at? Right. So that's the angular pressure. That's the essence of angular pressure. Another thing about angular pressure is that angular pressure naturally acts as a positional pressure of its own. So if you have angular pressure, let's say from the northwest, the west and the southwest. OK, then that means that the enemy sees the name tags northwest, west and southwest. Right. So the enemy sees those name tags all along the west side. And so what they're going to do is, OK, well, if you're northwest of me, you're southwest of me and you're directly west of me, the only direction I want to go in is directly east. Right. Well, that's going to cause them to just back up straight east. Now, let's say they have a tight choke to the north. Well, what you want to do is apply angular pressure by putting your guys a little bit to the southeast. Right. So then you have your guys west, south and east a little bit, and that's going to cause the enemy to start looking to walking north. All right. That's all angular pressure. And again, in all of this, you're going to try to be doing as much damage pressure as possible. And it's all kind of correlated with the positional pressure as well. All right. So um, another thing with uh, with angular pressure and this one's half damage pressure, but it's also half angular pressure. All right. If you're a solo clapper. All right. You want to try to hit separate clumps as much as possible. You don't usually want to hit the same clump that the rest of your Zerg hit as a solo clapper. And the, uh, unless your, your Zerg can't get kills by themselves, then I guess you can go and have to like try to carry them on kills, right? But if, if your Zerg's doing fine on their own, then as a solo clapper, what you really want to do is you want to hit separate clumps. You want to hit separate directions, okay? That way the enemy, let's say they're fighting you, uh, uh, you know, west to east, um, and then you hit them directly on their on their west side. Okay, you hit them on their west side. That's fine. And they're healing that and dealing with that, right? Pop, dropping a you know judicator armor, demon armor, enigmatics, heals all on that right on the west. And then you come in as a solo bomber. Let's say you're a Galatine player. You come in from the north side and you bomb their north side. Now suddenly they have to heal both the north side and the west side, right? So now they have to deal with angular pressure because they're having to look at multiple different angles. OK, so angular pressure isn't just where you're standing, where you're physically at, but it also has to do with where exactly you're exerting the damage that you're putting on the enemy because it's making them have to look at different directions. That's the point. You want them to basically be looking around the entire fucking screen and never feel as though they can relax like oh yeah the east is safe i don't have to worry about that you don't want to let them do that that's the that's the core of angular pressure all right and so i'm going to show you guys um something right now here in the uh like i said hold on uh all right so we're at minute six that way i don't forget all right I i'm not gonna forget i'm not gonna forget this time all right uh, this one doesn't have a black screen. Hold on. Usually videos have a black screen at the beginning. Um, if it if it doesn't, we'll, we'll just draw on this shit. It's okay. Uh, all right, that's good enough. There, there we go. No, hold on. There we go. All right, we'll we'll, we'll draw on here. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys angular pressure. All right. So uh, let's say the Zerg, the enemy Zerg, right, is is you know positioned around. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make it easier. What if the enemy Zerg is positioned here okay that's the enemy zerg and uh back here is a really big boulder right like a like a big a giant rock right there's a giant rock here okay so if there's a giant rock here and your zerg it's let's say here 
All right. Well, what you're doing is they are looking at you at the northwest side, right? All of you are going to be northwest of them. OK, so what you want to do here to exert angular pressure is spread your Zerg to the south. And then, yes, it's going to thin your lines, but it's going to make you have a longer wedge. Right. So now you look like that. Now they're going to see you to the northwest. They're going to see you to the direct west a little bit and maybe even a little bit to the southwest. All right. You make it even better by instead of doing that, you walk directly south and then you're going to go and, and spread out more like this. OK, so if you're spread out like this, then what the enemy is going to do, they see you. They see you west. They see you southwest and they see you a little bit south. Right. So what's the direction that they're going to back up in? Right. So when you were up here, when you were up here, the enemy sees you northwest, they're going to back up southeast. Right. And now they have this. So this this boulder doesn't matter. OK, and we're going to have a whole conversation. We're going to have a whole episode on um, on terrain. OK, we will have a whole a whole episode on terrain. I think I think that's the next episode, actually. I think it's next week. But um. We have a whole episode on terrain, and this is a, this is part of how you deal with terrain, right? So if you're up here in the northwest, then they're just gonna have an easy backup southeast. All right, no no problem. But if you're southwest here and you see a boulder behind them, whoa! I'm not even talking about the whole zerg, by the way. I'm just talking about you, one individual player. Let's say you're a tank. Let's say you're a DPS. Walk out to the side here. All right, put some some pressure right here. Some Qs and Ws, right? Some auto attacks. Some positional pressure. OK, nothing heavy. Don't overextend. Don't do anything crazy. All right, because then what? They're going to see you south. So th they're going to naturally want to go north. OK, now here's the problem with 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 this situation for them. If you're there. All right. If you're here and your Zerg is to the southwest here. Right. They're going to back up to the north. Right. But if your caller is smart, what he's going to do is he's going to tell his Zerg to walk north with them. OK, so what's going to happen is that now. His Zerg is going to look like this. Uh, no, I messed it up. All right. So there's the rock again. All right. There's the rock again. And now his Zerg is going to go here, right? Their enemy Zerg is going to go there. And you went straight north and now you're there. And at this point, you can now exert positional pressure directly east. Why? Because if you exert positional pressure directly east onto the enemy, the enemy will have no choice but to start doing this, right? Because some of them are going to back up northeast. Some of them are going to back up northeast as well, but on the bottom side of the rock. And so what that's going to do is all of these guys here in the center are going to be an easy engage, right? All because you exerted positional pressure. Notice in none of this entire movement did we engage. Not a single time did we engage. All you did was you placed yourself south and you auto attack Q and W on the enemy north. It made them naturally walk north. Your Zerg's caller was actually smart and walked your guys north. And then he walked them east and that is going to cut them off. Now, let's say you're a little late. Let's say you're a little late and actually most of them get out this way. OK, that's fine. Well, what you can do is now instead you're going to follow them on their far northeast. Why? Because I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to redraw all this. Let's say the rock is now down here. All right. And they walked and most of them walked up here. Well, if you're still following behind, you can still place your Zerg on the on the dots up here. Again, this is individual play. Your caller will never tell you to do this. And the reason your caller will never tell you to do this is because they have way too many other fucking things to worry about. All right. But I'm telling you, the best players are the ones that are able to execute this strategy exactly how I'm telling you. All right. So you're going to place yourself up here in the north. So that way you can press them up against that wall again. Now you can say, oh, well, now I'm losing north to south angle. That's fine. Right. Because the enemy is going to be like, yeah, that's fine. We have angle, so we're OK. But when you're walking them into that rock, it's not going to be OK. And the reason for it is because then suddenly that rock it's going to end up dividing them and they're going to have to do exactly this again. Some of them will go southeast around. Some of them will go southwest around because the caller is going to say, come east, come east, come east. Right. So the caller is going to say, come east. But for this guy, come east is a death trap because the enemy is about to engage this here. Right. Oh, my God. I made a mess. Hold on. So this guy that's standing here is like, no, I'm not going to go east because 
because the Zerg, the enemy Zerg's right there and they're about to hit this entire area. So therefore, this guy, this guy here is going to actually want to go southeast and around, right? So the moment that this guy goes southeast and around, what your Zerg now has the ability to do is they can chase east and try to kill this group before this other group helps, or they can chase west and kill this group before this group can catch up, right? So this is about angular pressure, but also about how you can use the terrain uh, for your for your uh, advantages. All right, I'm gonna put the video back. It was at 5.59, that way you guys can keep watching. And I'm gonna go back. All right, so that's basically angular pressure. And see, again, I told you guys, all these mesh together, right? Angular pressure works best with damage pressure. Um, it's also part of positional pressure. It's just a directed positional pressure, all right? Um, another kind of pressure is uh, disruption pressure, all right? Disruption pressure is basically being real fucking annoying, all right? Just be really annoying to the enemy. Listen. This mostly is for tanks, but it can work for anybody. If the enemy wants to do anything, all right? If the enemy wants to do anything at all, literally anything at all, you don't let them do it. And what I mean by anything at all, I literally mean even if they want to drop a Q, a fucking auto attack. They want to they wanna walk from a, a little bit, like they want to walk a fourth of a screen, which is not much, right? Like let's say they want to walk 20 meters. It's like nothing, right? In terms of walking. They want to walk 20 meters from south to north. And it's like not going to change anything. It's not a big deal. It doesn't matter, right? Just try to fucking stop them anyway. Try to don't, don't let them do it, right? Because then they're going to hate you. If you, they try to do every little thing and everything is being stopped or at least interrupted, they're going to be so fucking upset. And them being upset is part of the psychology, right? Remember, I told you guys, being under pressure has nothing to do with the game and it has everything to do with the player's experience psychologically, right? So if you can make an enemy player be upset in the middle of a fight, they are definitely going to make mistakes, all right? Because they're just going to be mad at you, trying to, trying to counter you, trying to kill you. And so you're going to destabilize their strategies and their tactics and their way that they play, all right? And we're all prone to this. Every single one of us is prone to this, all right? It's not like some people can do it, some people can't. No, 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 no. And in fact, I'll tell you the truth. Um, you can say, oh, well, veteran players, they... they you know, they, that's too hard to do it on veteran players. That's not true, man. Veteran players tend to be very, very egotistic, uh, a lot of them. And that means that you can hurt their ego by not letting them do anything. And that's going to make them upset. You understand? So all it is is just trying to get them upset. So make your enemy's life a living hell, especially for menial things like repositioning. All right. Um, when I used to run Soul Scythe, I used to do it all the time. I'm just giving you guys an example, right? When I used to run Soul Scythe, I used to run Stun Run on a W. It's the one that you auto attack and you, you give them like a little bit, like it's like a fucking 0 0.2 second stun or whatever. It's, it's nothing, all right? But it's a little stun. Uh, and I used to run Cartwheel, right? So what I used to do is literally, I, I, I would just walk into the enemy, exerting positional pressure, right? I would walk into the enemy. And then the moment I would see a healer just walking, like just literally just walking, like repositioning somewhere, I would just Cartwheel him in the opposite direction that he was going in, right? Because you can actually like make your cartwheel hit and push them in whatever direction you want. So anyway, I used to cartwheel them into, into the, the, the opposite direction they wanted to walk in, right? And it, it literally had no effect on anything in the match itself, on the, on the ZVZ itself. It had no effect because there was no engagements being called. There was no, it wasn't anything critical. It was nothing big, right? I was just cartwheeling him for no reason, apparently. But what it would do, it would make that healer start to play a little farther back over time. Why? Because he didn't want to keep getting hit. He wanted to be able to just walk around for free. But I wasn't letting him do that. So, you know, I, I, I would see, uh, you know, people like, um, uh, let's say, what's another role? Like, uh, I would see a, a, a Locust player, you know, walking up somewhere. Or actually, I'm going to give you guys a, a, a more modern example. I'll give you guys a more modern example. I see it all the time. People channeling their assassin hoods. It, shit, it's so easy to interrupt that shit, right? Just literally, you see a guy that just engaged and he's wearing an assassin hood. You know what he's going to do next? He's going to channel his assassin hood because he's going to reset his E or his or his whatever, right? 
He's going to channel his assassin hood. You know that. So just follow him. Literally, just follow him. And the moment he starts to channel that assassin hood, just stun him, root him, do whatever you can. Interrupt. Interrupt that cast. All right? And, and, and if you do that enough times to any player, they will be so upset with you because you're screwing up their play style. Right? And so if you're screwing up their play style, they're going to hate you and they're going to try to look for you in the ZVZ. And now that they're looking for you, guess what? They're not looking at the rest of the Zerg. They're not paying attention to the rest of the fight, right? All because they're upset with you, okay? And I'll tell you guys, because I've done this a million times, bomb squads fucking hate me because I literally find a bomb squad in the ZVZ and I just don't let them go. I just stick to them like fucking glue. Like, oh, it's like, I see a bomb squad just hit my Zerg and killed like 10 people. And I'm like, okay, the rest of the ZVZ, I'm, I'm just going to stay on them, right? And I, I, I'm serious. I literally just stay on him the entire fight. And they try to push me out. They try to auto attack me, cue me, whatever. And I just back up a little bit, catch some heals, but I always keep them in, in range, right? And then I just make their life miserable. And because of that, now literally just one person, I, I got a bunch of people upset and now all they want to do is try to kill me instead of kill my Zerg. And that's fine with me. I'm doing my job, right? So it's a part of disruption pressure, okay? It's, it's, it's pressure that comes from the enemy being upset with you because you're not allowing them to do anything, all right? Um, delay their engagements, delay their rotations. Uh, if you find a high value target, such as like a healer, a support, a, a bomber, like I said, like even like a Galatine clapper, right? Like you see a Galatine clapper and he's stacking his fucking, his, 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 uh, his swords, right? And you know that he doesn't have his E ready, but he's still stacking his swords because he wants to have everything ready to go, right? So when, when, when he does have his E up. So what do you do is just fucking purge him. Like if you're a heavy mace, purge his fucking, purge his fucking stacks, even if it's only at two stacks. Even, even if you know that he doesn't have his cooldown, just purge him anyway. Why? Because it's going to piss him off. And that's the goal is that if you're pissing them off, they're going to little by little make more and more and more mistakes. All right. You're making them lose their discipline. And when people are upset in this game, they tend to stop listening to calls too. Right. So disruption pressure is really about getting your enemy upset with you because you're not letting them do anything. And that's going to cause them to make mistakes on the field. So that's very, very, very important. All right. Um, now, the last, uh, so we will have time. Um, uh, we, we will definitely have time to make uh, some analysis on, on some of these videos, by the way. Um, so uh, the last one is timing pressure. All right. The last one is timing pressure. So the timing pressure is really just a matter of when you exert damage or disruption or angular pressure or, or positional pressure on the enemy. So any of these pressures, right? The timing of them is what matters more than the actual pressure itself, okay? If you're bothering the enemy, like I was talking about disrupting the enemy, right? If you're bothering the enemy, when the enemy is doing nothing, it's going to upset them. But it won't upset them as much as if you bother them when they're actually trying to accomplish something important, okay? Such as they wanted to try to flank your Zerg and you caught them very early so now they know fuck i can't flank the zerg because you know i was caught early right so timing um not only that when 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 an enemy thinks that they're safe right they're relaxed they're calm they're like okay yeah the enemy's to the west and they're not doing much right now everything's chill and then suddenly a solo clapper comes in or or a bomb squad or a, or a, or, a, or, a, or a total flank or a or a second engage right because like the, the, the this is this is this goes hand in hand with the with the bait and switch tactic that every, pretty much every caller is using right now uh the bait and switch tactic real quick is essentially the uh you know you engage with one party and then you en and then the, the enemy counter engages on that and then you counter engage with the rest of your zerg right that's the bait and switch so um, the bait and switch again, it's like, you know, you're, you're, you bait their engage. So then they think, okay, well, the enemy doesn't have cooldowns right now. So I'm safe, right? That's what they think. But then you hit them with the rest of your Zerg exactly when they feel safe. And so you're disrupting their timing, right? This is all about timing because you're disrupting their timing. They thought that you full engaged and now suddenly you hit them hard so now they realize, oh, wait, 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 wait. Now I got to get rid of that old timer of your co of your cooldowns. I got to make a new timer and I got to deal with 
the fallout of the fact that you counter engaged on me when I didn't expect you to, right? I didn't expect you to because I didn't think the timing was correct, okay? Uh, this is why bomb squads are also very effective is because they hit at good timings. Now, when it comes to bomb squads and solo clappers, here's another thing, all right, with timing pressure. If the enemy is like, okay, listen, we're dealing with we're dealing with a bunch of, uh, you know, damage that just, the enemy just hit us, okay? The enemy just hit us. They did a shitload of damage, but we're okay. We're all right. We just need to stabilize right now. We're, we're, we're going to be fine. We, we, we just got to stabilize. Just heal our boys, top them off, drop some supports down. We're going to be okay. And at that fucking moment, one Gala Clapper comes in and just blows shit up, right? And then it's like, fuck. We were about to be okay. We were about to stabilize. And this guy just hit us at the worst possible timing. Okay? That's what it is. It's timing, right? Understand that just because you can get a big clap right now doesn't mean it's the best timing to do so. Right? Sometimes, yeah, sure, get the big clap. It's going to help in, in some shape or form. At the minimum, it's going to be damage pressure, right? At the minimum, it's going to be damage pressure. But if you can hold it maybe two, three seconds and see that you're going to get a better chance to hit a good timing in two, three seconds, such as the enemy's about to start walking through a choke. I can hit them now or I can hit them when they walk in the choke, right? So that's the kind of thing that is a, a timing pressure, all right? Now, another thing about timing pressure is there, 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 there's sometimes something that happens where both Zergs at the same exact time decide to engage on each other, okay? And you're gonna see this very clearly many times because what's gonna happen is that the enemy's all gonna walk into you as you're engaging. That's not supposed to happen because they see you engaging, they're supposed to back the fuck up, right? So if you see them all walking at you while you're engaging, then you know you both called and engage at the same exact time. So therefore, in that scenario, you have to, have to, have to be first. You always have to hit first. If you're both engaging at the same time, it is better for you to hit first. Most of the time, people will say, no, 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 no. It's better to hit second because then you can just pop your defensives and then counter engage and you'll kill them all. That is true if you can pop your defensives. But the truth is, is that if you're both engaging at the same time, your Zerg is not ready to pop defensives. And guess what? Nor is their Zerg, right? Neither Zerg is stable enough during the engage to pop full defensives. So therefore, it is much, much better. There's a much higher chance of you winning the fight if in those scenarios, you engage the enemy first, right? So again, if you see the enemy coming at you while you're engaging, that means you're both engaging at the same time. You have to try to drop as quickly as possible, okay? And then obviously get the fuck out of the way because they're coming in. No matter how much you damage you put, they're still going to hit you. So get the hell out of the way, man. Right? Um, now, another thing too is with timing pressure. I talked about this a little bit with like a, like a solo bomber um, hitting on a choke. But I want you guys to try to use your minimap more. Okay? If, the, if you're pushing the enemy, all right? And the enemy keeps backing up and they keep backing up and they keep backing up. They keep kiting. Look at the map and see where they're kiting to. And if they're kiting to a choke, they may or may not know they're kiting to the choke. But if they are kiting to a choke, they're kiting themselves into a choke. Then what you want to do is you want to hold your cooldowns until they get to that choke. That way you can hit them on the choke rather than hit them in open field. All right. What you don't want to do is try to hit them in open field and then have them walk across a choke for free. Because the moment they walk across the choke, they're going to stabilize, okay? Whether you win the fight or not, I mean, that, that, that has nothing to do. It has to do with the fact that they're going to be able to stabilize. So being able to have a timing pressure that they're like, okay, we're good. We're just going to make it through this choke. We're going to be fine, right? You're a bomb squad. You're a bomber, solo bomber, or you're the caller. Don't engage on them until you know that you can catch them on the choke. Instead, as a caller, what I would tell you is, Tell your tanks to start catching. Tell your tanks to start disrupting the enemy uh, with whatever they have, any CC at all, just to slow them down, stop them enough so that by, by the time they get to the choke, our DPS are in range to hit that choke and delete them on that choke, right? Very, very important piece of timing. Now, now we're going to slow it down here, all right? This last piece of advice, 
okay? It's going to be about slowing it down, all right? And what I mean by that is every single thing I've talked about with pressure thus far is you doing things, right? Whether it's walking into the enemy, taking a specific angle on the enemy, doing some damage on the enemy, right? Or disrupting the enemy from doing what they want to do, right? Hitting the enemy at a specific timing, okay? Those are all things that we've talked about. And they all involve you doing something, right? They involve you doing something. Now, slowing it down. There's one more thing about pressure. And this one is the biggest fuck you to an enemy's mentality and to an enemy's tempo in a fight. All right. So if, 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 you, don't, if you don't know what tempo is, tempo is like the timing uh, of the fight, right? Like the rhythm. Okay. So. The best thing to do to exert pressure on the enemy is slow it down. All right. If you have been going back and forth, let's say you engage, they engage, then you engage, then they engage. Right. And you've been doing that for like three, four engagements in a row. And then suddenly you see, okay, neither, neither side is taking a positive out of this, right? We're both kind of just killing one or two guys each engage. It's, nobody's clearly winning, okay? Then change your strategy and slow it down, all right? And walk into them. Use positional pressure. Walk into them, all right? Let's say they just engaged you, okay? And now you're walking into them. You know what they're going to think? They're going to think, oh, shit, here they come, right? Because we've done this for two, three minutes straight, right? I've engaged, then they engage, then I engage, then they engage. I just engaged. Now they're about to engage, right? It makes sense. And then you walk into them. They're like, oh, yeah, see, they're walking into me. That means they're going to engage on me, right? So I'm going to tell my guys as a caller, I'm going to be like, all right, defenses now. They're coming in. They're coming in. Defenses now, right? And my guys are going to pop their defensives, some of them, not all of them, but some of them. And then what's going to happen is nothing. The enemy Zerg is just going to keep walking in, right? And then it's going to be like, wait, well, hold, hold up, hold up. What the fuck just happened? Why are they not engaging me, right? This is like chess. I made my move. It's your turn to make a move, right? Move something. Do something, right? It's going to freak them out, okay? And this is not just a caller, by the way. This is the entire enemy Zerg. They're going to be out of tempo. They're going to be confused. Wait, wait, you have cooldowns. You're not engaging me. Why? Why are you not engaging me? You're supposed to hit me right now. Don't you know you're supposed to hit me right now? Right? And they're, they're going to go over it in their heads over and over and over. And they're not going to understand what's going on. But if you're doing this and getting position, let's say you see a choke behind them or... You see like how I explained earlier with the boulder situation, right? Positioning your Zerg and to kind of walk them into a boulder, into a into a rock, into a tree, into a into a territory, into a castle, into a whatever, okay? Into a wall, okay? Well, maybe they don't see it or maybe they do. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because they just used cooldowns and you didn't. So if they decide to try to do anything about it, they're going to put themselves in a worse situation and then you're going to clap them, right? Because you do have cooldowns and they don't. So they're going to be nervous waiting for you to engage. Because they know you have cooldowns and you're standing inside of them. You're standing on top of them. But there's nothing they can do about it, right? So then they're going to get cooldowns again and they're going to hit you again. But guess what? You're going to be ready to absorb it because you've been absorbing it for the past three minutes anyway, right? And you're still going to keep walking them into their fucking death little by little. And there's nothing they can do because guess what? They weren't able to kill you when you guys were going back and forth. How the hell are they going to be able to kill you now? They're not. So all you're doing is waiting and you're destabilizing their, the mentality of the enemy. You're destabilizing their tempo. You're throwing them off because they think, well, it's your turn. Why are you not going? Why are you not engaging me? Right. And then they're going to open up their fucking mini map. And by the time they open up their mini map, they're going to see, oh, shit, I'm in a one way choke. I'm in a one way corner. 
and I'm about to fucking die like the, like like the movie this is fuck like like the movie 300 where they're like this is Sparta, right? Getting thrown into a fucking pit, you know, or later on in the movie when they get when they get pushed off the ledge, right? In the Last Kingdom, if you guys saw that show, sick ass show by the way, The Last Kingdom. You guys got to watch it if you didn't watch it, but in the Last Kingdom, Netflix show, right? They they start getting pushed off the fucking ledge, right? That's what's going to happen. It's exactly what's going to happen, right? But you have to understand how to apply pressure because even the timing of pressure, right? Sometimes you apply pressure, sometimes you don't. And the fact that you're switching up between the two, between applying pressure and not applying pressure, it destabilizes the enemy's mentality and their tempo. Yo, wife Agra, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Right? So that's that's my point. That's all I'm saying, right? Is that you need to be able to switch it up. When things aren't working, switch it up. And a lot of times you can switch it up by fucking with their psychology as opposed to fucking with what's actually happening on the ground. Right? Destabilize their mental. That's what pressure is all about. All right? And uh, we have uh, plenty of time here. We can definitely do at least uh, one, maybe two videos. Because um, I, I don't want to do a two-hour video. Uh, we've done... We've done way too many um, two-hour videos uh, lately, and that's because there, there was a lot of shit that I had to go over, right? So um, I want to I want to try to keep it to about an hour and a half because uh, I try to keep an average of an hour and a half, and 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 we've been going over a lot. But um, let me see, uh, guys in the chat right now, uh, what video do you guys want to go over? Uh, we have escalation versus mitos. Uh, the the player point of view is going to be oculto. All right, so Kulto's a really, really good player. Um, I have another video, it's Take Care versus Escalation, and this is actually my point of view. Um, I have another video, is Blue Army versus Raid, and this is Blue Dawn's point of view. Another really, really good player. And then uh, the last one is Elevate versus PoE, and this is Tracala video. Um, now, the Tracala video itself is not, it's not a great video. I'll tell you the truth, it's not a great video, all right? Um, it's just decent to kind of show you guys something. So, um, yeah, the player is good. Tracala, Tracala was a good player. I don't, I don't think he plays anymore, but he was a good player. But uh, the video itself is not, it's not great. I'm gonna give you guys about a minute to respond. But if you guys, if you guys don't respond, I'm gonna just pick one. I'll probably end up picking my own because that way I, I remember it better because I was there. So Escalation versus Mythos, Take Care versus Escalation, or Blue Army versus Raid. Ah, you guys are applying that pressure, huh? The the the, the tempo pressure. All right, listen, I'm going to pick my... Oh, all right, all right, we got what? All right, Mythos? All right. This is Escalation versus Mythos. I believe I believe Mythos loses this fight. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at this one. Especially because it's the newest one, I think. It's the more, most recent one uh, out of the four. All right, let me see here. So this is Oculto's video. Oculto makes some nice videos, man. He's a really, really, really good player. He also streams, obviously. Uh, as you guys can see, from this is from his stream, right? So uh, get, give him a follow. He's, he's he's a nice guy, and he, he he's a damn good player. So here in the Northeast uh, is Mitos. And in the southwest is uh, escalation, right? And so he, uh, oculto here is with escalation. So look, look, look. So this is the, the positional pressure right here. I, I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it this way. All right. So look, his zerg is down to the southeast, right? You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this better. I think this will be better. Yeah. There we go. All right. So look, look. So he's standing here, right? The enemy Zerg is over here and all the way over there, right? So they're they're kind of they're kind of all of this area, right? They're they're northeast of him and a little bit to the north, but not 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 too much, right? Now, his Zerg, look how thin they are, right? This is literally a one man like line, right? Like one by one, okay? However, they're spread all the way across and all the way down there. Now, the bulk of his Zerg is down there to the south, all right? Now, what I want you guys to pay attention to is look at this guy walking into his Zerg 
exerting positional pressure. Now, these guys are all kind of getting in position, but look at this guy, this other guy up here in the Northwest, this, this Grail Seeker guy, he's walking Northeast into them, putting positional pressure. Look at this guy, Bjorn Kid, I think is his name, Bjorn Kid. Uh, he's up there as well, putting positional pressure, right? And Oculto himself is gonna do positional pressure as well. Why is this positional pressure? Because this is on the angle, right? This is on the angle, so it's also angular pressure, right? Now, he's not doing any damage, nothing like that, so he's not doing any damage pressure, but he's doing angular and positional pressure, right? Now, the rest of his Zerg is down to the south, so why is it better for him to be up here? Well, because he's gonna make sure that these guys don't flank around to the south, uh, southwest and then flank his zerg down there right so he's gonna exert positional pressure to try to make sure that the guys remember i told you how he's gonna stand up here and the enemy's gonna kind of collapse into each other because he's standing there that's what he's gonna try to do all right and so watch so look at that the, the clap is happening here right now there's a call to engage it's happening right here on the east Look at that positional pressure. Look at these guys. They're trying to walk past this front line, right? But they don't actually do it. Look, see see how they walk back and forth? Look, look at that positional pressure. This guy just popped his, uh, his pop, he popped this thing. Now look, I want you guys to look at these guys. All right, look at these guys. All right, I'm gonna rewind it. I want you guys to look at those guys, all right? All right, so here they come. All right, here they come. Here they come, right? Now, Revert and Kyogen come in here now there's a there's a bridle there what did the bridle do the bridle saw this guy and he walked west he was coming southwest and he he turned west All right now he's coming south let's see what he does now th this guy coronavirus 19 he's a grail seeker for escalation right he's he's right here and he walks north while this bridled guy starts walking southeast let's see what the bridled guy does because he sees this guy walking at him watch this boom right immediate 180 right immediate this is literally what i'm talking about right that's positional pressure coronavirus actually did an auto attack on this guy right but but just his presence right his positional pressure okay made this guy aimst aimst that's his name all right made this guy turn around right and that's all it is it's not a big deal it's not a huge deal and it's not hard to do Right now, was coronavirus overexposed? No, no, he never got overexposed. He's he's just standing there. He's fine, right? This guy walked towards him. He walked towards him, right? The Ames walks towards the escalation guy. The escalation walk guy walks towards Ames, and that guy just walks away. Look at that. Now they're all walking back, right? Look, look at this positional pressure. Look at this. Oculto's here. Coronavirus is here. I think that's right. Kill, right kill? I'm not sure what his name is. And there's Quinn something. All right. Uh, it looks like another name tag there. All right. So you see that, right? And now, now look at what the enemy's doing. Look at what look at the enemy's doing. They're all backing up and they're starting to squeeze together, right? Look at this. This guy's walking east. This guy's walking east, right? So where are they walking? They're walking into the clump, right? Now, they're not necessarily trying to walk to the clump. They're just trying, they're not looking here. Their eyes are not east right they're not looking southeast their eyes are southwest they're looking at these guys right that's all they're trying to get away from so because they're trying to get away from it they're walking the other way and they're not noticing that they're gonna get clumped inevitably right so that's that's the point that i'm trying to make with positional pressure now here he backs up that's probably because the calls are back up restabilize do whatever right but i want you guys to pay attention Look at this entire side. Remember when the video started, there were quite a few enemies around here, right? Now there's literally only one. The rest is ally, right? All because of positional pressure. There was nothing that went on on this west side. Nothing at all other than positional pressure. And Oculto's really good at this, right? He understands positional pressure really, really well because he does it so often. Box office. Now here, here they're trying to come in, right? Here they're coming in, okay? And he backed off, right? He backed off. Yo, everyone And now they stop them here, right? They stop them here. This is this is regular disengage. Alright, this is regular disengage. Alright. But look, look at coronavirus. He's over here on the flank again, right? So coronavirus and oculto are both making sure they're on the flank. Because look at this. This is the center of the enemy, right? 
His main Zerg is down here. They're going to engage up here. All right. I don't think they're going to go this deep. I think they're going to hit here. But anyway, they're going to engage up here. And they're actually on the flank. If you actually look at the Zerg, their Zerg is up here. And they're, they're covering the flank. Right? Again. Now, look at these guys up here. All these guys are red name tags. They are all Mythos. They can walk around all these trees and flank this way. But they're not going to simply because they see a couple tanks standing on their way. Right? It's it's a psychological thing. What the hell are the tanks going to do? They're just going to stun you for a, a second or two or three at most. Right? That's it. It's psychological. Right? But it makes people scared. Okay? Yo, give me a look. Put the fist off. 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 Your luck is to go in five. So now he stops him. I mean, he's doing his job, right? He was in the flanks and now he's not because he was doing his job and that's fine. Four, three, two, one. Deep dirty to go. Deep dirty to go. Deep dirty to go. Yo, deep dirty to go. Deep dirty to go. Look how far. Okay, so remember, remember, pay attention. I want you guys to pay attention to his Zerg. His Zerg's down here, right? Um, uh, Del Negro right now is calling and he's engaging down here and he's engaging over here. All right? So his Zerg is fighting by the southeast wall of the map. All right? There's Mythos wrapping that northwest side. But why are they so far away? I mean, look, Oculto is literally one whole screen in front of his Zerg, right? Oculto is one screen away from his Zerg. And these guys are one screen away from Oculto. So this flank of Mythos is actually two screens away from the main Zerg. Why? Because they have positional pressure these guys are applying positional pressure and it's not even these guys i think these guys are a bomb squad okay it's these guys up here look there's a guy named Khal khalil khalil maybe khalil there's another guy up there i can't see his name and there's another guy there's like two guys up here on the far northwest again i can't see their names right but there's like four guys up there and all they're doing is just positional pressure that's all they're doing i promise you uh because they, they can't do anything against a 20-man group pushing them right and daitsa uh, which is one of their callers at the time um, is up there. So I think he might be calling a 20-man squad. So he's he is flanking. So see how a, a four-man squad just well positioned doing positional and angular pressure is making these guys all take forever to get to the clumps of the main Zerg of escalation. Watch this southeast, watch this southeast, watch this southeast. Yo, walking southeast out, walking southeast out, walking southeast out, walking southeast southwest. Walk Look, Oculto sees this, right? He was standing over here and he sees the angular pressure that the enemy is actually trying to win the angle. He walks west to try to cut off this wall and this angle, right? Beautiful play from Oculto here, all right? Oculto and Coronavirus are both, like, single-handedly holding the fucking west flank, all right? Everybody else is just supporting them, all right? But they are the ones doing the positional uh, movements that are actually counteracting this entire movement. Now, I do know that there's a bomb squad helping them, so maybe it's not single-handed. Uh, and there is another bomb squad up there. Uh, that is also bombing those guys. So not necessarily single-handed. I guess I guess I overspoke. All right, but but they are in the in the terms of them being part of the main Zerg, right? Because you can't never count on bomb squads to to accomplish these tasks. If they're accomplishing them, that's great. But you can't count on them to do it. Why? Because they they are not part of the main Zerg. Okay, they're gonna play off cold and they're gonna play on their own thing. Don't die, don't die. Yo, save yourself. Save yourself. Help each other. Help each other. Help each other. Help each other. Walk in artist again. Walk in artist again. Yo, just the first party. Buy the salty flow in five, four, three, two, one. Just the first party. So look, Del Negro here, the caller for escalation, is engaging east by the wall, right? So what does Oculto do? Go straight northwest because he sees these name, red name tags again. Right? He sees the name the, the red name tags again. Coming at him from the northwest. So he's gonna cover that with pressure again. Watch. Northeast party, southeast wall. Northeast party, southeast wall. That's the first party. Delay DPS now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So he just walks up there, right, and then and then just start backing up, right? Because he and a few other guys started walking up there. They just backed up. Walk back southwest. Walk back southwest. Now they are engaging on some some bomb squad over there on the west and everything, but I mean, they're not walking south at all because they simply see name tag south. That's the point. Because otherwise, they would be like, fuck the bomb squad northwest. Just put D-Tanks on them. We'll walk straight south and walk into the enemy and kill them. Help each other, help each other, help each other, help each other and spread. Yo! Look at that. They're coming in on the far west again, right? They're going to try to come in on the far west again. Look at his positioning. Full defenses now. Full defenses. Give us a lock. Better than this. Give us a lock. Better than this. Full defenses now. 
Now, he still jumps in. This is for this disengage, right? Uh, but he did leave the west flank. Oh. Yo, Loki to the north is now in five, four, three, two, one. The rest of the deck north is now. The rest of the deck north is That's a very nice uh, offensive ring right there. So, send this north. Look, look. The enemy got stunned by, by somebody and silenced by somebody. Okay? And now what are they going to do? They, remember, this entire group is in their own comps. They're doing their own thing. Right? They have cooldowns. They can walk into the. They can delete all this. Honestly, they can. They really can. But instead, they just back up. Look, they're full HP and they're backing up. Now they're gonna try to come in. Look how far back they are standing, right? They did come in, they did engage, but look how far back a lot of them are standing. Again, the positional advantage, the angular pressure, right? They're not letting escalation here is not letting the enemy take the different angles from them. Okay, see the crown is all the way over here on the far northwest, right? On far, sorry, far northeast, right? On the far northeast, the crown is on the far northeast. That means Del Negro is engaging on the wall over there on the far east, but he's still holding this choke because his Zerg is all spread out across this entire area, right? And that's great because this is what you're supposed to do. You need to read the position of your Zerg and read what the enemy's trying to do, right? Now, I do have to give it to Mythos here. This group is actually exerting really, really good positional pressure. The problem is that they could be doing even more. They could be doing more damage pressure. They're not doing enough, okay? They should be doing more, but they're not doing enough, all right? So that's the point, right? Is that everybody's gonna exert positional and angular pressure. And it's just a matter of how you do it and who wins those angles that's really going to determine a lot of these fights. Now, I think later on in this video, we're gonna see it even better. So I'm gonna skip forward. Uh, a little farther back. Yeah. So this, uh, so so Mito starts to walk backwards, right? They start walking backwards, uh, that way to the northwest, and watch this. North, walking the north. They fucking broke. Look, look, look at escalation spreading to the northeast here. Okay. And it's spreading to the west, and there's a wall here, right? There's a ridge, right? So you see how Escalation is walking northwest, but they're actually spreading to the far northeast to make sure that they can wrap the enemy and push them and herd them in that direction, right? That is angular pressure. They fucking rush! They're gonna turn soon! They're gonna turn soon! They're gonna turn soon! Walk into that! Walk into that! Look at these guys up here, right? All of these guys are friendly guys, and they're making these guys up here, these Mitos guys walk west walk in there they have they have cities walk in there be ready defense is now yo right, give me your socks walk in there walk in there walk in there walk in there west walk in there west full defense is now get ready get ready get ready walk in there west now that was a beautiful stun anyway the, the rest of the fight uh escalation ends up running them down uh, after this so i'll show you guys another one in a second here let me flip back Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the the take care versus escalation uh, one now. I'm gonna just show you guys real quick. Spread, spread. I'm gonna just show you guys some a, a couple minutes, um, and then and then we're gonna close it up. I don't want the the video too long. Yes, sir. Spread west here. Spread west here. No, nope. nope. Spread west. Spread west here. Spread west here. Spread west here. No, no cooldowns yet. No cooldowns yet. It's pull up only. Northwest, five, four, three, two, one. It's pull up only Northwest. It's pull up only Northwest. It, right in the middle, right in the middle. It's pull up, right in the middle. It's pull up. All right, so so here, this is actually me, right? So this is my, this is my video. Um, so look at this rock here, right? My Zerg, so take care Zerg is over there on the far east, all right? There's a rock here, okay? There's a wall, the Southwest wall of the map and escalations up here on the Northwest and look what they're trying to do, right? They're trying to walk through here and watch what I do, where I position myself, and 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 how I basically become a barrier to them. Detach, get ready to hold. Detach, get ready to hold. Detach, get ready to hold. Listen. So they're trying to walk through, and I'm not letting them. Right? They're not necessarily engaging right now. They're not. They were just trying to walk through here, and I'm just stopping them. Get everybody, get ready to go northwest on the east side. East side. Detach, look west. Everybody, look northeast. Five. And now they just walk back. Right? All because I disrupted their movement. Four, three. Two, one, northeast, northeast, northeast. And now I stand here on this choke to make sure that they know they can't walk by here. Northeast, northeast, detach look northwest. Northeast, blow that up, Gary. Look at this, I'm, I'm gonna show you guys again. Watch this. One, northeast, northeast, northeast. 
Look at how they're all spread across this entire area, right? And then watch what they do as soon as I walk into them, as well as other people, right? Like this, this other guy here is, is walking into them. Northeast, northeast. Look how they're starting to walk away from us. Details look northwest. No some guys walk east, some guys walk north, some guys walk west. Now these guys are walking into us, but the majority are walking away. Northeast, blow that up. Get look at that. There's there's actually a gap here now. There's there's literally a gap here, right? That's the point, right? It's all, it's just positional. It's just positional pressure. And because these guys that were standing here, a lot of them move east. Look, now they are clumping. And this is literally them clumping on their own. This is, this is not, like, this is not happening because, because we clump them. This is, they clump because they're walking away from me, uh, Tupac, and, and uh, I can't see the name tag. Oh, Nico Meister's on the, uh, oh no, they're up there. I don't know who, whoever's on the Eagle. There's somebody else on the Eagle, right? So it's four of us guys here. Uh, five, I guess there's a healer. There's five of us guys here. And now they just walked away to the east just because they're walking away from us. Now we are pushing on the far northeast. I don't know if you guys can see. Up there, we're pushing over here on the, on the northeast. Take care, it's pushing. And regardless of anything though, these guys got clumped for no reason, right? And that's the point. Get ready to drop defensives. Get ready to drop defensives. Yo. So it makes it easy to go and snare charge a bunch of them because, well, they 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 they, they did this to themselves. Spread west here. Spread west here. They're gonna counter. They're gonna counter. Full west, pet, full defensives. Full west, pet, full defensives. Full west, pet, full defensives. Listen, listen, listen. Spread west here. Spread west here. Walk into them. Walk into them. Walk into them. Walk into them. Walk so I see our bomb squad coming in here, right? I see our bomb squad coming in. So they're engaging. Um, at this point, I'm not applying any pressure myself. So I just drop a Judy on them to help them out. Walk into them, walk into them, spread west, walk into them. Yo, D tanks look east, D tanks look east, walk into them west. Get ready. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and kill whole fire line, kill whole fire line, kill whole fire line inside of us. Whole fire line, kill whole fire line, kill whole fire line, kill whole fire line. So now look, so now we have some bombers that are coming in from the west side, right? Remember that west angle again, right? Understanding the positional pressure and all that is very, very important. I'll show you guys. Go off line, then spread southeast again. Spread southeast again. Spread southeast again. Spread southeast again. Spread. So I click one guy that has a brimstone, and I inspect him instantly. Why? Because I want to see what it, what is he running. Um, I want to see is he a bomb squad? Is he a bomber? And then I inspect him. I see okay, he's a brimstone eight three. That's usually a bomber. Like if it's an eight one or maybe eight flat brimstone, I'd probably be like okay, maybe he's main zerg. I'm not sure, right? But eight three, that 100 percent tells me, yeah, he's he's a bomber, right? And I see a guy that's gonna beam him back here on the northwest. Let's say this again. Yo, no, this is D tanks look west. Ever look, see how he's doing circles just because he saw me? I I'm gonna roll it back. I want you to see his movement. Look at that brimstone guy's movement. Then spread southeast again. Spread so look, they're coming down southeast, right? They're coming straight southeast. They're not stopping. Southeast again. Coming straight southeast. Now this guy turned a little bit because he saw me. But look at the brimstone. Spread southeast again. He's coming. He's coming. Spread southeast again. Now he stopped right. The moment that he got close to me, he stopped moving forward, right? That's the point. That's the point right there, all right? So, Let's say this again. No, no. again, now he's going to try to walk past a little bit, and he's going to see what I'm doing. Listen, D tanks look west. Everyone look east. Go east. So now I pop his, his four sterling cape. Now he's going to go in, right? He His, his, his clapper's going in. He's actually going in as well. East side rock. East side rock. East side rock. I stop his clapper. Look, he just turned around again, right? Because he's not sure what to do. Rock. All heels, all heels in the middle, all heels in the middle, all heels in the middle, all heels in the middle. Listen, 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 they, they missed. Walk into them, walk into them northwest, walk into them northwest. Get ready. Look what happened. Look at this bomb squad. Now, listen, they have a great angle. This is a good angle. This is a good angle. But just because of one guy standing here, they're like, yeah, that's not going to happen, right? That's not going to happen. But remember, I told you guys earlier, and I said this earlier, right? I mentioned it. You find high value targets like bomb squads, solo bombers, uh, you know, some healers that are in a certain position or 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 just individual really, really good players, like high level players that you know are really, really good players, right? Um, like a like a like a King Just, like a like a Blue Dawn, uh, you know, like a really high level player, right? You find these kinds of guys. You stick to them like glue, right? And you don't let them go because that way you're basically making sure that they can't do anything, right? This is what I'm gonna do with this bomb squad. Ten, nine, walk past the front line, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Northwest, northwest, northwest. Blow up, blow up here, blow up here, blow up here. Nice, nice, nice. Now spread. Look, he's stacking now, right? To the east, spread, he's spread, he's spread, he's. Kill guys inside of us, spread, he's. I just purge him. Yo, bomb squad, you're coming. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, rest pot, rest pot, walk through south. Rest pot, walk through south. Rest pot, heal north, walk through south. Walk through south, walk through south, five. See that? I'm just making his life miserable, right? This is what I was telling you. It's the psychological aspect, right? I bet you at this point in time, this guy fucking hates me right now. Right? This guy fucking hates me right now. Right? But there's nothing they can do about me. There, there's literally nothing they can do about me. Right? I'm just 
gonna stay inside of them and I'm, I'm gonna keep disrupting them. Find me, find me, find me. He'll find me. Find so at this point, they, he literally walks completely away. Look at that. Find me, find me, find me, find me, find me. Find me, find me, find me, boys. Find me. Detect hold, detect hold, detect hold. Like he's literally off my screen now, right? He's literally off my screen. So. That's the point, right? I'm not gonna show you guys the whole video. Um, in this particular fight, take care, take care beats uh, escalation in this fight. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna show the rest of the video because uh, we gotta, we gotta close it up. Um, I'm gonna let the video keep running while we talk. I'm gonna just turn off the volume here. Uh, there we go. But yeah, we're gonna close it up. Uh, White Fagro says angler pressure makes you good in Albion, makes you good in bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to comment. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know TOS rules too much, but, uh, I, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so that's basically the pressure that you put on to the enemy. All right. That's the pressure that you're able to put onto the enemy. That's how it works. It's really hard right? It's really, really hard to be able to do this consistently, okay? To apply pressure on the enemy consistently in a manner that doesn't expose you to, to being killed, clapped consistently all the time, right? It's very, very important that you guys understand that it, it, it is something that is hard to do and you have to try to accomplish it a lot. You have to do it over and over and over. You can't just go and be like, Oh yeah, like it'll happen little by little naturally. No, 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 no. You have to teach yourself to do these things, okay? And and the majority of this honestly has to do with positioning. And the 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 last part of it is just to dealing some damage on the enemy and looking at angles, okay? But if you really understand the positioning that you're supposed to take opposite of the enemy, then you're going to be in a much better position, just like we saw with Oculto and the position that he was taking covering the flanks, right? It's not just that he was watching the flanks, it's that he was repositioning according to what the enemy was trying to do, all right? And then you saw with me how I was just disrupting, uh, you know, literally one bomber, right? But I was just disrupting everything that he could do. He was a high value target and I wasn't letting him do anything, right? I was just simply with my presence, it was known that he wasn't gonna do anything there. So he just ran away and tried to lose me, tried to go somewhere else so that he can find a different angle. OK, um, either way, he was going to be out of the fight for at least 30 seconds, if not a minute. Right. So all those things are very important to pressure. Um, but remember, the pressure is a psychological attack on the enemy. OK, it's not an attack directly on the field. It's more about disrupting your opponent's ability to understand what to do and to make rational decisions. OK, as long as you're able to accomplish that then then you're going to you're going to have one leg up on the enemy. This is why it's always better uh when you're playing, you know, a ZVZ to try to stay calm and relaxed and don't let shit get to you, okay? Just because your Zerg made a lot of bad mistakes doesn't mean that you should start to rage out and get upset and and do stupid things because then it's only going to make it worse, right? Try to stay calm, try to stay relaxed and try to keep making positive decisions as opposed to just responding to what the enemy is annoying you with, all right? Um, Starler says pro pro tip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why Fagro? I'm particularly bad at detang. So nice to learn about this stuff. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing, right? A lot of people think that this is only for detank, but really it's for everybody. Right. And like I said, from the beginning of the video, it's not, it's not really too much for healer. Like that really doesn't apply too much for healer. Uh, but for every other role, yeah, it absolutely does apply. Okay. Uh, Sarge banned me from detank once. I mean, D tanks is a hard job, man. Especially nowadays. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of flanks that are happening in, in ZVZs nowadays, and so D tanks are, are are becoming a more and more important role over time. So uh, it's not a role that just anybody can fill. All right. All right. Any last questions, comments, concerns? Drop them in the chat. I'll give you guys about a minute before I I uh, head off. Um, I do not have a stream tomorrow. Uh, there is no stream tomorrow. There is no stream tomorrow. Uh, just letting you guys know. Um, we got some family events, Mother's Day, right? So, so, uh, got to celebrate the family, right? Uh, but we will be back on Monday. I believe it's Monday. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back on Monday. Uh, we got episode 22 on Monday. All right. So, like I said, we're going to be going through really like heavy shit, right? Like more complex topics, um, that are very, very important. And these are the things that. If you guys learn them and apply them and use them appropriately in ZBZs, 
you guys are going to go from being average players to being very, very, very top of the line players, right? So um, these are the these are the really, really big important factors to becoming good at, at ZBZ. All right, no questions. All right, I appreciate you guys. Um, if you guys do have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, get in the Discord. The Discord on YouTube is on in the description. Um, the Discord on Twitch, if you scroll down, it's going to be there. There's a link to the Discord. Uh, I am available on the Discord all the time. You guys can message me there. You guys can message me, private message, whatever you guys want. Um, I am there to help you guys out as much as possible. That is the goal. So I appreciate you guys. I, I will see you guys in the next one.